Hello everyone. So now we are starting with the fourth lesson that is Keynesian theory of national income. Till now we have done classical theory of output and employment. And then we did the criticism of classical theory of output and employment. In third lesson that it that is prior to this, we did Keynesian theory of employment. And now we will do the Keynesian theory of national income. That is, according to Keynes, how does national income gets derived in the economy? So, Keynesian theory of employment, which we have done therein we discuss that it is determined on the basis of effective demand. And effective demand is the point where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. Now, we are saying that how does national income gets determined? The link between national income theory and employment theory is that according to Keynes, there is a direct relationship between employment and income. So he says that whenever there is an increase in employment, there is also an increase in income. Because according to Keynes, if we are taking all other components to be constant, then the only variable is how many labor is employed. Suppose if two labors are employed, we are saying that suppose if two labors are employed and they are given 20 rupees each, then the total income will be 40 rupees. So this is the national income that will be derived. In layman terms, we say that there is a direct positive relationship between employment and income. So we say this theory is relevant only from the point of view of short run because we are taking all other components to be constant. That is stock of capital, labor, population, etc. is assumed to be constant. Sorry for the disturbance. Then we say that in this theory, income is a function of employment and since there and there is direct relationship between them. Since the level of employment depends upon aggregate demand and aggregate supply, which we have discussed in the previous theory. Mein discuss kiya hai. Similarly, the level of income is also dependent upon the level of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. See, if we are saying that our income is dependent on employment, and our employment is effective demand, which is dependent on aggregate demand and aggregate supply, pe dependent hai. then naturally income bhi hamara aggregate demand and aggregate supply pe dependent. Hai. So we say that there are two determinants of national income in the economy as per Keynesian theory, that is aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Now we will discuss both these components, aggregate supply and aggregate demand. So aggregate supply in Keynesian theory is assumed to be constant because we have kept, Keynes have kept the share of capital, labor, population, etc. to be constant. So if these are factors of production constant, then our aggregate supply will be constant. Hoega. So we say that it is assumed to be constant since the technical conditions are constant. So the entire discussion of depression, unemployment, jiske bhi hum baat kar le, sara discussion sirf hamara aggregate demand se concerned ho jata hai. Matlab agar hume koi bhi component change karna hai, depression se bahar aana hai, unemployment ko change karna hai, unemployment ka rate reduce karna hai, then it means that we need to change our aggregate demand. We have discussed last theory mein bhi discuss kiya tha, ki agar hume effective demand increase karni hai, matlab hume aggregate demand increase karna padega. So, now let us discuss about aggregate demand. In a closed economy, jaha pe government sector nahi hai, hum wo case discuss karenge, kyunki Keynes ne wohi case discuss kiya tha. So, he says that aggregate demand is dependent upon two factors, that is consumption demand and investment demand. Consumption demand is done by households and investment demand is done by business firms. Let us discuss about both these aspects one by one. First, we are starting with consumption demand. So we say that consumption demand is dependent upon marginal propensity to consume and the income level. Marginal propensity to consume is constant. Constant means in the short run, it will be constant. And another factor is income. So when our income increases, consumption also increases. Now we say that this depends upon consumption demand, depends upon the propensity to consume. Propensity to consume hota hai, MPC hota hai, 
डेल्टा सी बाय डेल्टा वाई मतलब हमारा कंजम्पन कितना चेंज हो रहा है हमारे इनकम में चेंज होने की वजह से अगर हमारी इनकम सपोज हंड्रेड रुपीज है तो ऐसा तो नहीं है कि हम हंड्रेड का हंड्रेड रुपीज कंज्यूम कर लेते हैं हम उस हंड्रेड में से एट्टी रुपीज कंज्यूम करेंगे तो हमारा इस केस में एमपीसी हो जाएगा जीरो पॉइंट एट और ये शॉर्ट रन में कॉन्स्टेंट रहता है इसलिए हमने इसको कॉन्स्टेंट लिया है बिकॉज दिस थ्योरी इज फ्रॉम दॉर्ट रन एस्पेक्ट so we say that consumption demand is dependent upon propensity to consume and the level of income since the propensity to consume is constant in the short run why because our taste preferences they all remain constant in the short run so the we say consumption function consumption is a function of income and whenever income increases consumption also increases when our income is composed of consumption and saving the two parts so this was about the consumption demand now we will discuss the second part that is investment demand so this investment is dependent upon interest rate and marginal efficiency of capital interest rate hota hai ki hum agar ap loan le rahe hain bank se us investment pe to hame kitna interest rate pay karna pad raha hai ye short run mein constant rehta hai agar hamara interest rate increase karega तो हमारा इन्वेस्टमेंट रिड्यूस करता है अगर इंटरेस्ट रेट रिड्यूस करेगा तो इन्वेस्टमेंट इंक्रीज करता है विच मीन्स दैट देयर इज नेगेटिव रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन इंटरेस्ट एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट हाउ एवर इन दिनिशियन थ्योरी दिस इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट रेट इज केप्ट कॉन्स्टेंट सेकेंड एस्पेक्ट और सेकेंड फैक्टर ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट डिमांड कि हम कितना इन्वेस्टमेंट डिमांड करेंगे बिजनेस फॉर्म डिपेंड करता है मार्जिनल एफिशियंसी ऑफ कैपिटल पे मतलब क्या कॉस्ट है उन कैपिटल गुड्स की और वहां से हम कितना प्रॉफिट एक्सपेक्टेशंस रख रहे हैं अगर हमारी कॉस्ट हंड्रेड रुपीज की है और हम प्रॉफिट एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं टू हंड्रेड रुपीज का होगा तो नेचुरली हम वो इन्वेस्टमेंट डिमांड करेंगे सो वी से दैट इन्वेस्टमेंट डिपेंड्स अपॉन मार्जिनल एफिशियंसी ऑफ कैपिटल एंड रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट एंड सिंस इंटरेस्ट रेट इज क्वाइट स्टेबल इन दिस शॉर्ट टर्म सो वी से दैट इन्वेस्टमेंट इज डिपेंडेंट अपॉन मार्जिनल एफिशियंसी ऑफ कैपिटल marginal efficiency of capital the formal definition is it is the expected rate of profit which the firm hopes to get from the investment in capital assets and thus marginal efficiency of capital depends upon the cost of the capital goods and profit expectations so marginal efficiency of capital does not directly depend upon income but affected indirectly by the changes in the income let us now draw the consumption and this equilibrium income diagrammatically so we say that as we can see there is an upward sloping consumption line now here as you can see ki hamara jo ye part hai consumption zero origin se start nahi ho raha hai balki is portion se start ho raha hai isko hum bolte hain autonomous consumption jo ye y intersect aa raha hai इसका ये मतलब है कि अगर कंज्यूमर्स की इनकम जीरो भी है तब भी वो बैग बोरो स्टील करके कुछ ना कुछ मिनिमम कंजम्पन तो करेंगे ही करेंगे इसलिए जीरो इनकम पे भी कंजम्पन जीरो नहीं होती है तो दिस ओ जेड लाइन ये वाली जो ओ जेड लाइन है दिस ओ जेड लाइन रिप्रेजेंट्स एग्रीगेट सप्लाई ऑफ द इकोनॉमी एंड दस दिस इज ऑल्सो टर्म एज इनकम लाइन एंड ये जो हमारा सी है ये सी दिस इज दोपेंसिटी टू कंज्यूम एंड इट स्लोप्स अपवर्ड वाई इट स्लोप्स अपवर्ड बिकॉज एज द इनकम इंक्रीजेस कंजम्पन ऑल्सो इंक्रीजेस नाउ दिस गैप बिटवीन ओ जेड एंड ओ सी मतलब हम इस गैप के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं ये जो हमारा गैप है दिस गैप बिटवीन ओ जेड एंड ओ सी दिस कीप्स ऑन इंक्रीजिंग एज इनकम इंक्रीजेस बिकॉज दिस इम्प्लाइज की जब हमारी इनकम बहुत ज्यादा इंक्रीज हो जाती है तो हमारा सेविंग इंक्रीज करता है सो दिस गैप रिप्रेजेंट आवर सेविंग दैट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ द इनकम दैट वी हैव नॉट कंज्यूम्ड देन दिस गैप बिटवीन सी एंड सी प्लस आई दैट इज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द गैप बिटवीन दीज टू लाइन सो दिस गैप बिटवीन सी एंड सी प्लस आई इज पैरल 
throughout implying that the level of investment is constant and does not change over time as we can see that we are representing this portion as i which means that this movement this from point a to point b we are saying that this is our investment level and this investment level is constant that is why there is a parallel upward shift so this line finally represents aggregate demand curve <clears throat> Now, equilibrium level of income is achieved at the point of intersection of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Aggregate demand is equal to C plus I and aggregate supply is equal to C plus S, where C stands for consumption, I stands for investment and S stands for savings. So this is the equilibrium point. If suppose that at any point we are consuming below Y, suppose our here we are consuming at Y1 suppose that we are at the point y1 instead of y so at this point we can see that aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply and thus here hamar hum agar y1 pe consume kar rahe hai so we can easily see that here we are actually our aggregate supply is at this point and our aggregate demand is at this point therefore we say that aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply or is liye next time period mein hamari income increase karegi wahi maan lo agar hum is y2 pe hai which means ki hamara aggregate demand yahan pe hai this is our aggregate demand this is our aggregate supply so aggregate supply is greater than aggregate demand matlab producers ke paas kuch aisi inventory hai stock hai jo wo abhi abhi jinki sale nahi ho rahi hai to next time period mein wo kam produce karenge taki unka abhi ka inventory bhi wahan pe sale off ho jaye so in the next time period the income and the output is going to reduce that is why we say that we come back to the equilibrium level of income at this point so this is what we have written here and if suppose we are producing after y then aggregate supply will be greater than aggregate demand and income will reduce hence we say that y is the only equilibrium level of income now keynesian theory also have some criticisms since isme humne liya hai aggregate demand is equal to uh, c plus i humne yahan pe closed economy li hai exports nahi liye imports nahi liye however now we are functioning in an open economy so we say that this first criticism is that this says it is a closed economy then we say assuming that there is perfect competition in the market is not true then this is a static condition kyunki isme humne general it general theory nahi li hai instead this is a special case next he only talked about cyclical unemployment and this theory is from the aspect of short run economies because we are taking factors of production techniques etc to be constant so we are saying that this theory is only relevant from the short run aspect hence this theory is not free from criticisms so this was the keynesian theory of income national income however some part of this theory is left wherein we will algebraically discuss this theory algebraically determine the equilibrium that we will do in the next lesson that is lesson 5 so you can see that lesson also we'll shortly discuss that till then please take care and if you have any doubt you can mention in comments i'll try to solve all the best everyone